Good morning, Oakland Church. How you guys feeling? You guys ready to praise the Lord? Come on, let's stand to our feet. Those tuning in online, thank you guys for tuning in. Come on, let's just celebrate Jesus in this place. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we just give you everything. No matter what we go through, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our devotion. You are worthy of everything. We love you. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. And there is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. Oh, we've already won. Come on, let me see y'all clap at this. Come on. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you. And there is no army with the power to conquer you. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. Oh, we've already won. Come on, every voice, let's sing out. Say. Show me one thing it can't do. Show me a mountain it can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Come on, if you believe it, come on, sing it out. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters it can't move. Cause He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. It's possible. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Say, there is a kingdom that's advancing at the speed of light, and in His kingdom, every dead thing is bound to rise. Oh God, our Redeemer, oh, He is faithful to revive. Oh, He will revive. Come on, if you blow, come on, let's see it Show me, say. Show me one thing he can do. Show me a mountain he can move. Oh, he's the God of the breakthrough. And anything is possible. I'll sing it with my own eyes. Show me, show me one thing that's too long. Show me waters he can move. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible with Jesus. Come on, let's see that. Well, all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out, yeah. Well, victory dance, I will dance loud and faith. I will crush disappointment and break care. Come on, it's on you. Oh, all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. Love victory dance, I will dance loud and faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. Love victory dance, I will. We believe, we believe, we 
Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you. Come on, we're going to sing. It's not a new song, but we ain't never sang it here. Let's sing it all together. God of Abraham. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Come on. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Come on, every voice, great is. Great is your faithfulness to come on. me. I believe that great, great is your faithfulness every voice. to me. From the rising sun, from the rising sun to the setting. Same, I will praise your names. Great is your faithfulness to me. You're faithful, Jesus. You're faithful, Jesus. And we can trust in you. We can trust in you. Come on, every voice. Yeah. God from age to age, though the earth may pass away, you were remain the same. Yeah, history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Come on, though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. Come on, and let my heart learn when you speak a word.
more time, lift up your hands. See, great is your faithfulness to me. Come on, sing it Great is your faithfulness from the rising sun, rising sun to the setting sun. Before we go into this uh, next song, just wanted to give a little uh, scriptural uh, context for it. Um, the song is uh, What a Beautiful Name. And uh, the scripture I'm going to read today is going to come from Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 9 through 11. It says, Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Just something I was reflecting on this morning. I think a lot of times, including myself, can definitely get, you know, caught up in our lives, caught up in the busyness of it all. And sometimes we can just forget to remember the awe that is God, that is Jesus, the name of Jesus, the amazing, powerful, healing name that is Jesus. And that's something I just wanted to reflect on this morning and want you guys to reflect on as well. Um, if you're also finding yourself struggling through that in your life, you know, you get caught up in so many different things, kids, work, struggles you may be going through in your life, whatever it may be. Let's always choose to make time to be in awe of Jesus and what his name can do and what his name can heal us from. Because it is powerful, it is wonderful, it is beautiful. There is no other name compared to it. There is no other name that has power like Jesus. I just want us to reflect on that as we go into this next song this morning. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Hidden glory and creation, now revealed. Beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus.
wonderful name it is. Yes, Jesus, what a wonderful name it is. Jesus, what a healing name it is. Yes, Lord, death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silent. The most unseen and great. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no He took bread and he broke it and he said this is my body which is given for you do it in remembrance of me and I just want to say real quickly here as we receive communion and go back into worship and I just have a sense this place is going to explode with glory and praise to the name that's above every name and we're going to give God our highest praise as we move into this service the Lord's body was broken is broken so 
so the church would arise with something the world's never seen. The world is broken. How many people know the world is broken? We all know that. The world is broken. But God said when, he, when his body was being broken, he would see the church. He would see the body of Christ arise in the midst of a broken world. Members one of another, loving one another, laying our lives down for one another. That literally we are the temple of God. Every one of us are living stones. And God abides in the midst of our praises. His glory is here. What does that mean? His healing power is here. His convicting power, his strengthening power. The fresh oil is here this morning to anoint us with fresh oil. The glory of God is here. He said, the world is broken, but amongst my people, my glory will abide. I'm gonna show the world a, a group of people, a family, the visible, the, the visible family of the living God where my invisible kingdom abides in the midst of the praises of my people this morning. So churches, we remember the broken body. Break the wafer with us, representing the broken body. And Lord, we want to thank you that your body was broken, that you said, I will build my church in the midst of the broken world, and the gates of hell will not prevail against, that your glory will be seen through the church, individually in the corporate body of Christ. Father, I thank you that no devil in hell will stop the mighty work of God, that we will rescue those far and large out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear Son. We will see people delivered. We will see people set free, Lord God, brought into the freedom that's only found in Christ in the midst of the growing, loving, strengthening church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you agree with that, say a big amen, church. Let's partake together. Amen. Lord, we want to thank you that you said after supper you took the cup and you said this cup is the cup of my blood in the new covenant. Oh, Lord, we're just so thankful for the new covenant. Lord, we want to thank you that you said I'm going to take away the stony heart. I'm going to put in my people a responsive heart, a new spirit, a new nature. They're going to know me intimately and personally. I'm going to write my laws upon their hearts. They're going to walk with me and I'm going to walk in them. I'm going to give them the grace to know me personally and intimately. Oh, church, aren't you grateful that we don't have a, we're not under the old covenant where there was, it was laws and deeds and there was no intimacy apart from the high priest going into the Holy of Holies once a year. Aren't you glad this morning that through the body of Christ the veil was rent? that we can literally go into the very holies of holies with God through the precious blood. Aren't you glad that his spirit lives in me, that you can know him intimately? Nobody has to tell you to know God. You know him by the spirit of God, by the nature he put in you. You've been born of God. You're an heir of God. You're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Because of God being so for you, what could possibly be against you? Can I hear a good amen, church? Father, we thank you that what can wash away our sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the power of your blood that erases, that cleanses, that delivers us from sin. Father God, we give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, let's partake together. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. There's power in your blood. Amen. As we sing, continue to sing, let's just think about the beautiful name he is. He's our Savior. He's our Redeemer. He's the bread of life. He's our Lord. He's our Creator. He's the Son of the living God. He's the only begotten Son. He's the beloved Son. He's the Holy One of Israel. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let's worship Him. Let's worship Him, the most beautiful name, the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, church, I just want you to, I just want to say, the Lord is here. God is in our midst. The Bible says we're the living stones of the temple. We're literally the invisible God is in this place this morning. So let's get out of our comfort zones and let the high praises of God be in our mouth. Our praise team and worship teams are going to lead us into some high praises. Execute vengeance on the enemy through your praise today. Put the enemy in shackles over your children. Put the enemies in shackles over your business. Put the enemy in shackles over your health and over your finances. Put the shackles, shackles over the enemy, over your, over your influence, over people in Jesus' name. 
We're not going to patty cake this morning. We're going to give our God the praises that's due his glorious, glorious name, Lord. We worship you at Oakland Church, Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. Let's praise him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You want to come up to the front, church? You want to come up to the front and just give God high praises? You want to break out of your seat for a moment? Tell God you love him. Tell God you're not ashamed of him. That you haven't forgotten what he's done at the cross. To die for our sins. To take our place. To thank him for your healing. To thank him for the blessing on your family. To thank him for the Holy Spirit. The power of God. That he's your savior. He's your deliverer. He's your soon coming king. The matchless name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise for victory. 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 Celebrating victory in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we praise you. We give you glory, Lord. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Death could not hold you. The veil's all before you. Praise God. Praise God. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name. Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name name Some of you are thanking God for healing over your children. You're praising Him in advance. That He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals me, heals my children. By His stripes we were healed. Some of you are praising God for a breakthrough in one area or another area. You're saying, I'm not going to be defeated. I'm going to let, the Bible says, God's enthroned on my praises. And I'm not going to let the enemy shackle me, but I'm going to shackle him through the presence of the living God. In Jesus' name. Kelsey, you're just in my heart today. DJ, lay your hands on your wife. The Lord just highlighted you to me right now. He just sees. He's the God who sees. He's the God who sees. You've laid down your life for him, and he sees that. You are so precious. Just your worship to God was so pure and just so beautiful. And I just know he's going to grant you the desires of your heart. So keep on keeping on. Don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season, if you faint not, you're going to reap the blessings and the benefits. In the name of Jesus, let's just stretch our hands over to her right now. Thank you, Lord, for her faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for blessing her. We just thank you for her life. We thank you for her love for you, oh God. We just honor her this day, oh God. Just encourage her, Father. Encourage her, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So many great things that are happening this month at the church, next generation, with our students, our fourth through sixth graders, our junior high, high school. So many great things are happening this Saturday at Lansing as we take our children before the throne of grace right at the state capitol 
believe God that God's going to bring protection over our children. When he spoke to me and said, the house is on fire, save my children. We're not going to let the devil steal our children, our kids, and our nation, the state of Michigan. In Jesus' name, we're declaring Jesus is Lord over our state. We're thanking God for the brave event coming up. It's going to be the narrow way. We're thanking God for brave with, with uh, Brad Stenman and the, uh, the uprise at the Little Caesars Arena. What God's going to do over Metroplex area is going to be so glorious and powerful, church. Let's get our faith up there, our expectancy in the midst of everything. Keep praises in our mouth, the two-edged sword in our hands. Because this is a glorious year. Praise God, a glorious season, a glorious time. One more time, death cannot hold him. One more time, one more shout, one more praise to our God. In Jesus' name. Come on, church, one more time. There's no rival. Heavens are roaring. Praise big dreamers, big thinkers. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. I thank you for visionaries and dreamers. Many of you, Jillian's gonna be putting together a school for the children. I'm telling you, big dreams. Amen, amen, amen. Austin's got a healing birthing in his body. Many of you are birthing businesses and birthing beautiful blessings over your children and grandchildren. Many of you are standing in the gap for breakthroughs. You're not waiting for it to happen. You're praising God in the midst of it, knowing that it will happen in Jesus' name. It will happen over my family, over my church, over my city, over my family. In Jesus' name, amen. And let's go back to our seats shouting the victory. Tell somebody, you ain't got the victory this morning. Tell them. We've got the victory in Jesus' name. We'll be back in about 20 seconds. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a good morning. I know I am too. That was just a powerful time of worship, wasn't it? Oh, come on, you can respond. That's a good time of worship. Awesome. <laughs> well, welcome to Oakland Church. We're so glad that you came. Whether you're joining us online or in person, we are glad that you are here. My name is Andrew. I'm an associate pastor here, and you are welcome. And hey, we have a saying that says you don't have to believe to belong. And if this is your first time, maybe you've never been to church or maybe someone dragged you in or however you got here or you stumbled across us on your feed, we're just glad that you are with us. So can we just celebrate anyone who's new? Come on, you can do better than that. We love, love, love new people. Love new people. And we have connect cards. There's some in the backs of the seats. There's also some in the lobby. We have a gift for you. Fill it out. Let us know who you are. Who you are. We want to get you more information. And if you're watching online, there's a digital option available for you there 
as well. And by the way, I do hear that we do have our Connect class today. So if you are new here and you want to get plugged in, we do have a one-hour, one-time class that is, follows only our 11 a.m. service after this. So make sure you get connected to that if that's who you are. And as we transition into our time of giving, ushers, you can begin to make your way up and start making your way around. And hopefully they have the giving slide on the screen um, behind me. Um, I just want to remind you that the scriptures talk about not giving begrudgingly, right? It's giving cheerfully. And honestly, when we look at ourselves and we examine our lives, this is a great space right here in a church where we're celebrating Jesus, where we, we get to participate and partner with what God is already doing, and we can easily do it with joy because we know what it is that we're giving to. We're not giving to just any old thing. This is this space where people get to meet with the most important person they will ever encounter, right? And the more and more we partner with God in doing so, it should be just nothing but a cheerful opportunity for all of us. So I encourage you, if you're in a space in your mind, you're like, man, I just don't know. I Maybe examine yourself and when we go to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, is there something going on in my heart where I'm not, I'm not giving with cheer and with joy? Because it's, it's, it's one of these things that when we have an opportunity to partner with God and seeing people come to know Jesus, and it just could be as simple as just giving just a little bit more, I don't know why you wouldn't, right? And so I encourage you, we believe that generosity is a lifestyle because we respond. I always say this and I say it because it reminds even myself that I'm responding to what God's already done. I'm not, I'm, I know that I've been graciously given to. And so it's only but proper to give God and well, give to the church in response to what God has given me. Because I can never just give him anything. It all belongs to him. Amen. Amen. So if you would, there's options you can give on the screen behind me. You can give my cash or check, there's a text message option. There's also an option you can give on our secure website, oaklandchurch.me or the app, if that's available to you as well. But let's pray and I just encourage you, we're gonna give with cheer, with joy, because we know where we're giving, all right? By your head, close your eyes. If you're watching online, please join us that, this way as well. Lord, we just, we're thankful that we already have met with you so easily today. Thankful that we serve a God who is always coming closer and closer to us, that we don't have to go around looking hard for you, but God, it's you that wants to be found. It's you that's always looking for us to begin with. And so we're thankful. And I just pray that today, Lord, we align our hearts with what you're already doing, with your mission, with everything that you are, Lord. We just pray that every one of us gives with joy and cheer because we know who it is and what it is that we're giving to. So we're thankful, God, for what you've done for us. And this is just a thank you, a response, a worship, a remembrance to us that tells us this is worth more than anything else. You are worth more than anything else in the world. And this is, this is our greatest joy. It is, a, it is a privilege to give in moments like these. We're thankful. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone shouted a big amen. All right, turn your attention to the screen. Thank you. Welcome to OC, my name is Andrew and this is my friend Angel and we're on the team here. Whether this is your first time or you've been coming for a while, we want you to know that you're welcome here, you belong here and we can't wait to get to know you more. Here at Oakland Church, we believe that life isn't meant to be done alone but in community and we wanna connect with you today. Grab that Connect card that's right in front of you, fill it out and take it to the Connect Center in the lobby after service. We wanna put this gift in your hands. One of the things that they'll tell you about at the Connect Center is our one-time, one-hour Connect class that meets directly following the 11 a.m. service today. We'd love for you to join us. This Saturday, we're partnering with Her Voice Movement to pray for our children in Lansing. Go to the lobby for more information. That's it for your morning announcements. Stay tuned for the message.
Pastor Mira from Oakland Church. I'm so excited to invite you to our spring women's event, The Narrow Way, on Tuesday, May 7th. We will be joined by Pastor Alex Seeley from The Belonging Co. who will be sharing a powerful word and recording artist Rita Springer who will be leading a beautiful, anointed time of worship with our OC worship team. This year's theme, The Narrow Way, celebrates the faithful guidance and provision God gives to each of us as we journey toward our kingdom's purpose and grow in intimacy with a loving Savior. It's a reminder to praise the Lord in the beautiful mountaintop moments and to share the testimony of His goodness so that others will be encouraged to trust in a greater way. We want to share this message with all generations of women, so bring your daughters, mothers, aunts, grandmothers, and friends. We'll have great food, fun photo booths, delicious s'mores, and even a rock wall. So come dressed for adventure. It'll be a great time sharing fun fellowship in the Word. In Acts 2, the Lord promises to pour His Spirit out on His daughters. We believe that the Lord wants to bless us with renewed clarity, focus, wisdom, and faith at this special event. We're praying that every woman in attendance will leave with the joy of the Lord as her strength as she journeys on the narrow way. Childcare is available for ages just zero through eight for five dollars per child. Tickets and seating are available now for forty dollars until April thirtieth, and then forty-five dollars after that. Get your tickets today at BraveWomen.me. It won't be the same without you. Praise God. Good morning, church. Wow, isn't Jesus wonderful? Look at your neighbor and just tell him real quickly, if it wasn't for you, I'd be the best looking person in the building. If it wasn't for you, I think you need that this morning. <laughs> Some of you need a little shot in the arm, praise God. Okay, well, we're excited. I'm excited this morning for you, each one of you being here. My son Jonathan's with us this morning, and he'll be, he'll be joining me a little bit later in the message and uh, just kind of pouring out. You know, the Bible says God has set gifts in the church, and each one of you have a grace, have a gift. And Jonathan has a real prophetic flow in his life. He's been used, he's been traveling all over different parts of America and birthed out of this ministry, just like your children are being birthed out of the body of Christ, the church, and it's a wonderful thing. So uh, in, in, this, in the light of this whole month of April, it's, we're ministering in this, in the, the theme is the next generation. And what God does in this church, in the church, the body of Christ, how he pours his spirit upon the next generation. So we're going to see it. Isaac Murray is going to be joining me on the keyboards in just a little bit here. And uh, this next generation have been touched by the power of God, the presence of God. But when I think about the next generation, I think first of all, we've got to talk about the family of God. Just talking about the family of God. Lord, I just want to thank you that you make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer. Holy Spirit, thank you for anointing me strengthen in me to bring forth the oracle of God this morning. We won't just be hearers of your word, but Lord, we will be doers of your word. And because of that, we'll be blessed. In Jesus' name, and everybody said a good amen. Amen? Amen. The family of God. Now listen to Ephesians 3, Paul's writing. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father. Everybody say, God is my Father. To the believer. To the believer, the Bible says that God's our Father. Now, because of Adam's sin, apart from Jesus Christ, the scripture says in John 8, 44, he told unbelievers, he said, he said, Satan is your father. Now, that might be hard on some people, but it's the truth. Because of the sin nature, we've been taken into the family of darkness through Adam's sin. But Christ came just to translate us out of darkness into light where God becomes our heavenly father. And Paul's praying to the church of Ephesus, for this reason I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. God's the father of the family of God on earth and in heaven. How many people know that we don't get to choose our physical families? That's the sovereignty of God has placed us in our families, the physical families. And it's a wonderful thing to see that. But God plants it. Psalm 68 says, God setteth the solitary in families. And he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. I want you to see that how God puts each one of us in families. But uh, God also puts us all, his sovereign will, in his spiritual families, the local churches. 
How many people know that there's local churches all over our state, all over our community? Uh, but even there, just like your biological family, the Bible says God sets us in the local church that he wants us at. It's very, very important that you seek the Lord and say, God, I just don't want to go where I want to go. You're the great shepherd of the sheepfold. Plant me in the sheepfold that you want me to be planted in. Lord, plant me in one that's spirit-filled, filled with the power and the presence of God and preaches the word of God and, and, and the love of God is present. So God sets us in our physical families. God sets us in the local church, 1 Corinthians 12, 18. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. So we see that God sets us in the local church. And we always go to God, God, you're the Lord of the church. Where do you want me? And obey the Lord. Because in obedience to the Lord, you'll be blessed when you're planted in the house, in, in, the, in, the, in the place God has called you to serve, called you to receive from. Amen. Local churches are the visible expression of the family of God. Local churches are literally the visible expression of the family of God on earth. It's the family of God on earth. The local church is the visible link to the invisible God and the kingdom of God. Can I hear a good amen? It's the local church that is the visible presence of the invisible kingdom of God. God is here this morning. He's living in you by his spirit, and his spirit it dwells amongst the body of Christ. So the church is the physical link to the invisible kingdom of God, which is a powerful, powerful thing this morning. Amen. So in the sight of God, in the sight of God, the local church family is a big deal, is a big deal. I would not be here today if it wasn't for the local church. I got born again in 76. I got planted right in the church. I got planted out of darkness into God's light. God planted me in that local church. I, I ate the word. The presence of the Lord was there, nourished. It's been the church that has raised me, the church that has strengthened me and blessed me. And that local church, the church is a, is a big deal to the living God. I will build my church. Very, very important to God. Listen, and whether you know this or not, this is a big thing. Our commitment to Christ and our commitment to the church reveals our commitment to God. This is a big thing. Are you with me this morning? Our, our commitment and committed to the body, committed to the family, committed to God is, is twofold. We're committed to God personally, but we're also committed to the body of Christ. You can't love the head of the church, Jesus, without loving his body. It's one and the same to God. And our commitment to the church, the body of Christ, reveals our commitment to God. And that's a big thing. Because the Lord says, how could you love somebody who you, who, you, who you don't see if you don't love people that you do see? Can I hear 1 John 4, 20? Whoever does not love their brothers and sisters whom they have seen cannot love God whom they do not see. Meaning our love to the body and to the family reveals our love to God. It's a, it's a great thing. See, our commitment to the local church, the family of God, carries the most profound benefits spiritually and physically. Our commitment to the family, this is God's idea, this is God's thing for your benefit and for my benefit, carries profound benefits. You want to hear some of those benefits? Oh, wait a minute, now I'm in the wrong place now. You want to hear some of those benefits? <laughs> I know, it's, it's a nine o'clock and we're, we're getting there in Jesus' name. Come on. Number one, only in the family of God do chains fall off. Psalm 68, 6, God setteth the solitary families, and he bringeth out those which are bound with chains. I'm telling you, in the church where the anointing is, where the word of God, yep, you're going to get things in your own study time. Yes, you are with the Lord, with the word, it'll set you free. But there's something about the anointing in the local church. My dad walked in one way and walked out of that church delivered from gambling, one service. The power of God was in the church the power of the presence of God. I walked in one way, walked out another way. The old Dominic was dead, the new came. How many people will say the Lord, the, the Lord has given you words, he's given you strength, he's healed your bodies. Chains fall off in the midst of the family, the body of Christ. But the rebellious dwell in the dry land. Those who do not go with God, there's no food, there's no water. The world, it's a dry land. Number two, those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish. 
The scripture says when you're planted properly, you're going to flourish. Amen. Then he goes on to say in verse 10 of Psalms 92, he says, My horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I've been anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also have seen my desire upon my enemies. My ear hear the desire on the wicked one who rise up against me. I love this. This is all one and the same about those that are planted. Those that are planted, he says, the number one, he says, my horn will be exalted like a wild ox, speaking of strength and victory. When we're planted in, in the local church, there's a sense of strength and victory that you get to drink from the Spirit in, that, in, the, in the family of God, the church. Strength is my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. An ox that has won a battle, lifts his horns up, strong and victorious. He said, you've anointed me with fresh oil. When we're, co we're connected and, and to the family, there's an oil that continues to flow on you from the presence of God. Even this morning, you came in one way. You'll be leaving different. You'll be leaving different. Fresh oil, fresh oil. Then he talks about my desire on my enemies. The enemy, the powers of darkness. My ears will hear the desire on, on the wicked one who rise up against me. He's talking about in the local church there's a power that we have in us, the authority of Christ. But he says even being a part of it, there's a delivering power over enemies, over things that would attack you through the week. There's something about the anointing in the body of Christ on a Sunday or Wednesday in a community group that destroys the yokes and sets captives free. Amen. Amen. This is, this is establishing ourselves, establishing our families so the next generation can receive the overflow of a father and a mother that are planted properly. The residual is on the children and on the children's children, those that are planted in the courts of God shall flourish in the courts of God. Then he goes on to talk about the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedars of Lebanon. This is a big thing. Speaking of strong and durable, those that are planted properly, you'll remain strong week in and week out, whether you feel it or don't feel it. You're, God's doing something in you. You're planted properly, durable, strong, outlasting things. Then he goes on, those that are planted in the house of God shall flourish. They shall sh still bear fruit in their old age. They shall be fresh. One translation says fat. That doesn't mean physically fat. It means you'll be fat with the anointing and the, 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 the yoke, the yokes that the anointing destroys, it means the anointing will get fat, fatter and greater, meaning greater and greater that yokes will be destroyed. To declare that the Lord is upright, he's my rock, there's no unrighteousness in him. So being planted, you'll flourish in the house of God. You'll have this strong durability. There's going to be a graceful beauty that comes into our lives. You'll grow tall and high like the cedars. There'll be a fragrance on your family and on your life when you're properly uh, in line with the, with the, the family of God. Uh, you'll spread wide. Your influence will grow. In hard times and in good times, we'll continue to flourish. We'll bear fruit in old age. We'll be fresh and flourishing. Verse, the Amplified says, verse 15, they are living memorials to declare that the Lord is upright and faithful to his promises. He's my rock. There's no unrighteousness with him. And I love this about God. Those that are planted will be living memorials. Yeah, God is faithful. He's been faithful. I've been plugged in at Oakland. That's the family. That's the sheepfold that he planted me in. And I'm receiving the anointing, fresh oil. I'm, I'm receiving durability and strength and power. And I could, I'm a living memorial that God has set this up to declare the Lord is upright. He's faithful to his promises. He's my rock. There's no unrighteousness. Also, the scripture talks about protection. We get a protection in the house. The Lord will create over an entire site of Mount Zion and over all our assemblies. Churches are assemblies. A cloud by day, a smoke, brightness of a flaming fire by night. And over all the glory and brilliance will be a canopy, meaning like a defense, a covering of his divine love and protection. There's a protection, a covering, when you're properly um, uh, planted in the, in, the, in the courts of God, in the, in the, in the place of, that God has called us to be the church. And you'll be fruitful and increasing, Jeremiah 23, 3. But I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries where they've been driven out, and I'll bring them back to their folds, and they'll be a fruitful people, and they'll multiply and increase. I like that. 
I like that. <clears throat> we'll be a fruitful people because we're back into our folds. God brought us out and brought us here. I just declare that over you, that you're being fruitful, that there's a protection over you, fresh oil over you, that there's a delivering power over you, durability and strength that's on you. And, um, and, and the scripture says, number five, speaks about that we're better together. We're biblical together. God never, never made believers to be disconnected. Believers were meant to do life together. Hebrews 10, 21. Since we, everybody say we. we. You notice he didn't say me. He said we. He speaks of the church when Paul's writing to the Hebrews. He says, since we have a great high priest over the house of God. Let us, everybody say us. He's talking about a church. The power of God and the presence of God works best in us in a we situation. Let us draw near to God with sincere hearts, with full assurance of faith that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from the guilty conscience, having our bodies washed with pure oil. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he is who you promised is faithful. Let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. You see the we, you see the us in gaining strength, in gaining the power of, of promises, gaining the power of us holding fast together. We're strengthened to hold fast to the word in community. There's something about a blessing that we gain. It's a good thing. Even the power of the blood works best in the situation in the midst of community. There's something about the blood that works personally, but there's something about the power. First John 3, 1, 3. We proclaim to you that we have, what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. Now he's talking about fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, if we, everybody say we, see there's this thing about loving God and loving one another. You can't love God and not love, truly care for the body, the family of God. This whole fellowship with God really goes to another level when we're in fellowship with the body of Christ the family of God, the church of God. It's in that setting that fellowship reaches its highest point. Take me from the church, separate me from the body, and my joy will not be where it should be. Trust me. I need you and you need me. There's something, members one another, baptized by one spirit into one body. There's a joining, there's a strengthening. Can I hear a good amen? And he says this, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. It's the power of the blood that's a continually cleansing when we're in fellowship with God, fellowship properly with the saints. It's a beautiful thing that happens. Can I hear a good amen? And I brought the message to get to this point. So buckle your seatbelts right now, and Isaac's going to be coming out any minute. And I just, I just want to talk about the church briefly as the temple. The Bible says that we are an invisible temple. This building... This building is not God's temple. It houses the temple. And the scripture says you and I are living stones, spiritual living stones. That's what God sees. That's the metaphor he uses of this holy temple where God abides in the middle of his temple, living stones, one other that God dwells in the midst of his temple. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Ephesians 2, 17. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us could come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers or foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. The cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him you Gentiles 
are also being made part of this dwelling. You Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Listen to that. We are all carefully joined together, becoming God's holy temple. Then he goes on to, through him, each one of us, Gentiles, are being made part of this dwelling where God lives. The church is God's favorite house and home. Your body, but the body of Christ collectively, the power, the amplified love and presence of God. So beautiful. 1 Peter 2, 2 4 says, You are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was re rejected by people, but he is chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priest. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices to God. Now, Isaac, don't play hide and seek on me. If you're around here, come on out now. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But he talks about now we have a priestly ministry. We're living stones. We're the temple of God. God's favorite home is right here. The invisible God is right here. And then he calls us priests giving spiritual sacrifices to God. And one way we do those spiritual sacrifices is our worship to God. Our worship and our praise to God. I just want you to think about this. Psalm 22, 3. David's speaking about God. You, O Lord, are enthroned in the praises of Israel. He's enthroned in our praises. We want the manifest presence of God. It doesn't matter what the guy to the left or right thinks about me. I fear God more than the way I look. I want God's presence in my children my family, in my home, and in my church. And the way God's presence is magnified is when I enthrone him in my praises. Psalms 50, 23, Whosoever offereth praise, God says, glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show that person, that church, the salvation of God. Praising church, a church that's conducting theirself to walk with God in a daily manner, God says, that church, that family, that home, I will declare and demonstrate the power of my salvation. And then Psalms 145, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute, this is a good part, vengeance upon the nations, punishments on the peoples. This is demonic situations for the church. I'll tell you, when Marianne and Angie go to Lansing, we're not fighting men, but we're bringing high praises to God. Listen, number eight, verse eight, to bind kings with chains. That's demonic principalities. They're nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all the saints. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Isaiah 61, 3 to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. God gives beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, listen, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be magnified. Don't you just love the Lord this morning? Jonathan, I'm gonna have you kind of come up to my side here, but I'm gonna give you really quickly, really quickly, you could just kind of hang, hang out there by Isaac for a minute. Um, seven, quickly, seven Hebrew words for praising. Are you ready for them? Number one, one word, Hebrew word is called Hallel. Hallel, that word means to praise, to shine, to boast, to show, to rave, to celebrate, to be clamorously foolish. We just let God know that we love him and we're praising him. It's the root word that we get the word hallelujah, to praise to boast in God, to rave, to celebrate Him. Thank you, God. Praise you, God, if it had not been for you. The second word is yada. I can give you these scriptures, but for the sake of time, I'm going to hold off. The second word, Hebrew, is yada. This word means the extended hand. That's to throw out the hand, therefore to worship God with extended hands, to lift up my hands to God. The Bible calls us a metaphor like we're trees trees that are lifting up their branches and leaves and worship to God. 
something about lifted hands. I remember as a believer, the day that my hands went all the way vertical to God, there was a breakthrough over me. Lifted hands. I will bless the Lord as long as I live. I will yada, lift up my hands in thy name. In the lexicon, the opposite meaning is to demone. The opposite of lifting up hands is to demone, the wringing of the hands in worry, fear. No, I'm not going to bemoan. I'm not going to wring my hands. I'm going to lift them up and worship the living God. Third is tada. Literally means an extension of the hand in adoration or acceptance. It's used for thanking God for things not yet received as well as things already at hand. So some of you will lift up holy hands thanking God for things not manifested yet but on their way. Thank you, Lord, for my kids. Thank you for this is happening. Thank you for the favor with the building. Thank you for the favor with the school. Thank you for what you're doing at Caesars. Thank you for what you're doing at Lansing. Thank you for what you're doing with one and all the different things that are going on with our youth, uh, with the Isaac and the worship, Eric and our youth pastor. Sabah is the next Hebrew word. It means to shout, to address in a loud tone, to demand, to triumph. It's the shout. Lift, clap your hands, all you people. Shout Shabbat to God, the voice of triumph. See, we're biblical at times when we shout. We can go to a tiger game or a lions game, but we shout to our God. The walls fell when there was the shout in the house. Barak means to kneel down, to bless God as an act of adoration. Oh, come, let us adore him. Let us bow. Let us kneel. Zamar means to, to pluck the strings of an instrument, to sing as our worship teams on the guitars, on the drums. It's used with musical instruments, singing to the Lord. And to heal you literally means the seventh one, singing on a halal, singing halals, hallelujahs. The singing involving music, especially singing hymns of the Spirit or praise. Sing in the Spirit, sing with the understanding. God inhabits the praises of his people. Praise the Lord. How many people say a good amen? So I want you to stand to your feet this morning in Jesus' name. And we're just going to take a couple moments. As one of our next-gen believers, Isaac, just takes us as we begin to worship God. Some of you want to lift up extended hands. He inhabits the praises. Someone wants want to die. Thanking God before I see the, the answer manifested. Thanking God that he's walking me through this season, giving me wisdom, protection, understanding. He's with me, for me, worshiping God, shouting with the voice of triumph. Praise God. Isaac, just take us in. Let's go for it, Worthy church. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve A little louder on his mic. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Come on, every voice. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Oh, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, 
generation to come on down here now you are our college you. students our children you our youth Jesus you just come on to the front right now the anointing is coming on in our worship our students our college students our young adults our children if you come on down to the front you once you're right up here I'm going to bring Jonathan up in a little bit in Jesus name for from you are all things and to are all things God you deserve the glory you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all day and night you are worthy Jesus for from you are all things and to you are all things God, you deserve the glory. Yeah, yeah. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Angel, if you just come right around them. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. God, you deserve the glory. Praise the Lord. How many people feel the presence of God? Before we move forward, you could be seated real quick. I want to give a foundation um, from what my dad was, was preaching on about the family and the generations. And when I was down here, I just began to write as the Holy Spirit was inspiring me. And he literally said that each and every one of us are literally walking on prophetic words. In this building, this house, this actual church building, we're literally standing on a prophetic word. This building was birthed by a word from God. Jeremiah 1, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were even in your mother's womb, young people, the Lord knew you. And there's an appointed time for each and every one of us to be brought onto the earth. And this is your appointed time, whether you're 90 or whether you're five years old, you're on the earth, this is your appointed time. Because before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. This earth was literally built on a word from God. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void. Darkness fell upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. It's interesting that the first thing the Lord did was put the light in the darkness. Why? Because the enemy was on the earth, and he just wanted to give him a little shock treatment. But you see, from Genesis to Revelation, the enemy is always chased after the Word to try to destroy the Word. Because without the Word, there's no life. Because Word creates life. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And so if you don't speak, how can life happen? Genesis 3:15, 14 and 15. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, on the dust you shall live all the days of your life. Verse 15, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. 
Since Genesis, there's been a tug of war for the seed. God has always gone after the next generation. Why? Because without you, God can't do his work. Without Jesus, there was no completed work. That's why when Jesus, before Jesus was on the earth, Herod tried to get rid of all the kids. The enemy was working through King Herod. Because something was rumbling and shaking on the earth and the enemy could feel it. The enemy knows the scriptures and he tried to stuff it out. But the interesting thing is, you might not think God wants to use you, but he wants to use you to do great and mighty things. See, in this church, inside these four walls, God spoke to me at a very young age. I'd be sitting on the front row. I'm the pastor's kid. I always had the best seat in the house. Praise the Lord. All the grandmas looked at me at Easter. They wanted to see what suit I was wearing. Come on. I don't think a lot of people wear suits to church anymore, but I was always dressed to the nine, thanks to my mom. And on these pews in the old building, the presence of God would hit me whether I liked it or not. Then the Lord gifted me in music and I began to play on the drums every Sunday morning when I was in the age of 12. I was a head drummer of the church with Pastor Sandy Frankenstein and, and Brad Kelly, your son. And I would play those drums and the spirit of the Lord would come on me and I'd encounter God. And I wanna encourage the parents here this morning that even if your kid says, I don't want to come to church, you force them to come. Because something happens when you get in the presence of God. It shifts the atmosphere of your home and it shifts the atmosphere of your life. Because once the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, He won't let you go. He chases you down. When I began to backslide and I'd go to the clubs, He chased me down in the bathroom at the bars. He chased me down. Well, Jay Roos, you're a pastor's kid. You couldn't go to the bars. I did. But you know what? The Holy Spirit was after me. And I began to weep. And I began to travail. And the Holy Spirit would grab me. Why? Because of the prayers of my parents and because of the anointings I received in this house. God loved me and he was after me. I committed my heart to him and he never let me go. And so this morning, the Lord is consecrating you young people, the Lord is consecrating this whole house and he's telling you, he's setting you apart for a certain purpose. And that purpose is to destroy the works of the enemy. God did not create a weak bride. He created a strong bride to do his bidding. And the Lord says, this is the time now more than ever because the world needs you and, the, and God needs your seed, period. This is not about something that was done a long time ago. This is about now time. And God's called you now. And so before Jesus left the earth, in Mark chapter 16, he said, listen disciples, how many people know the disciples were kind of messed up people? That's why I like the apostle Peter because I feel like I'm like him a lot. I like to fish. I have issues, I doubt, I deny. Come on, somebody. He called Peter. That dude was messed up. Listen, what's your name? What's your name? Ben. Ben, I'm telling you. It's not about performance. It's not about lifting your hands. It's about being you. Because God created you. You're unique. God's given you your own thumbprint. It's not about what anyone else does. It's not about who you see on TV. It's not about the past. It's not about nothing. It's about you being you. And God wants you to know he loves you just the way you are. So continue. You don't have to perform. You just got to be you. And when you come into your identity and when you realize that Jesus is inside of you, you shine bright just like him. What does a Christian mean? It means to be Christ-like. Amen. So Jesus said, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they'll drive out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them. 
they will place their hands on sick people and they will recover. That is what Jesus wants the church to do. And if we're not doing that, something's wrong. Something's off, we're out of alignment. And so we're coming into a season of intense warfare, but intense signs, wonders, and miracles. And so the Lord is calling you young people and he's anointing you this morning for signs, wonders, and miracles. Being a follower of Christ is cool. Listen, look at me. I own a business. I used to be a Christian rapper. I got five kids. I'm not saying like I'm really cool or anything, but listen, my life is awesome. And if God can use me, he can use you. So why don't you young kids lift your hands up this morning and I'm gonna say a blessing over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that your word says in Jeremiah, before you formed them in their mother's womb, you knew them, you set them apart to be a prophet to the nation. You set them apart to do great things. So Father, this morning, we anoint them, Lord, for end time, harvest, and significance. I thank you, Lord, that your word says, greater is he that's in you that's, than he that's in the world. Just say this after me. I am a child of God and I will do big things. Devil, take your hands off me and Holy Spirit, fill me from the top of my head to the very soles of my feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Now just begin to clap and shout to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And I hear the Lord say um, for Auntie Marlena, the Lord says, though the sorrows may last for the night, the Lord says to you, joy comes in the morning. And what the enemy has stolen from you, the Lord says you're going to recover sevenfold. And the Lord says, I'm giving you a 100-fold return on your finances. The Lord says what's coming to you now with greater measure, you'll see your grandkids in the kingdom. You'll see your children in the kingdom. And the Lord says, I've heard every cry and every prayer. So get ready, because the next five years are going to be your most glorious years on the earth, declares the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. Come on, sing it out. Come on, lift your hands and just declare it to the Lord. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Born from you. Austin, right, brother? Amen. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Austin. I thank you for his servant's heart. Holy Spirit, I ask now that you touch his body from the top of his head to the very soles of his feet. You spirit of infirmity, I command you to go now. I break you off his body. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. Every nook, cranny, and crevice I release the blood of Jesus on you now. In Jesus' name, healing power flows through your body. We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says you're healed. His report says you're free. His report says victory in the mighty name of Jesus. And I, see, I hear the Lord say he's giving you a shout. And the enemy tried to take your voice out. The enemy tried to depress you and compress you. But the Lord says in this season, in the next year, next year I'm going to begin to decompress what the enemy tried to compress and what the enemy meant for evil the Lord says I'm going to turn it for the good and the Lord says you're going to go out like a shock wave into the city and the Lord says I've called you to prophesy and I called you to lift up a banner over your home and the Lord says you're going to have children and you're going to be blessed and the Lord says I'm blessing you like I blessed my son and my friend Abraham so get ready no longer will you live in turmoil and question marks the Lord says, I've placed an exclamation point over your life. The Lord says, I'm putting a flag and a banner down over your home. For this is the time, this is the hour to raise up and be a light to your family and be a light to those. I've called you to touch the ones that others can't touch. I've given you a unique anointing. And so the enemies tried to take you out. But the Lord says, I've counted you in 
So get ready, believe, and have faith for what I'm about to do in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I just prophesy. I prophesy to the Kelly household. I thank you, Lord, that every single one, Lord, you've called them and you've anointed them, Lord, to be kingdom warriors and to advance um, Jesus to the nations. So, God, I thank you, Lord, that you're moving and you're shifting things, God, and you're healing and you're mending hearts. So I'm asking you, God, by the end of 2024, Lord, that this family will be reunited under the banner of Christ Jesus. I see a banner of Jesus over your home. And the Lord says there's going to be a, a reunion, there's going to be a unity that takes place in your house, even around Christmas time of 2024. And God says you're going to see a dramatic shift in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy it now in Jesus' name. I cancel the assignment of the enemy over your family's life in the mighty name of Jesus. And I release the sword of the Lord over your house. And every prayer that you speak will be answers, the Lord says, and it will happen swiftly in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, someone clap and shout to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. People just come right up here in the center just yeah I just feel like there's still something we're supposed to do here I just want to obey the Lord just come up real close all so precious okay, just come on just line up right up right up here thank you father for these young people I believe there's more out there too but that's okay just receive this Jonathan what up? I know there's something for these kids send someone I'm leaving but I'm gonna send someone and he's gonna give you power how many young people want some power this morning amen and so the Holy Spirit came on me at a very young age and the Holy Spirit's the helper he's the one who gives you power to do great things so when I'm up here speaking it's not me speaking it's the Holy Spirit speaking through me amen because the normal John is kind of quiet and reserved but the Holy Spirit John is loud and very interesting amen <laughs> and so I'm just going to pray for a, fre a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. So lift your hands in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for each and every young person that came forward this morning. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're here even now and you're moving and you're working. Just say this after me. Say, Holy Spirit, baptize me in a fresh new way in the mighty name of Jesus. Now just take a deep breath and say, Holy Spirit, fill me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. God, you 
you deserve the glory You are worthy of it all You are worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things you deserve the glory Every voice all across the room Let's sing it out You're worthy You are worthy of it all Yes, you are, Jesus You are worthy of it all Oh, for from you are all things And to you are all things God, you deserve the glory online listening to this this morning I want to lead you to the Lord this morning Christ came and he died for us that we might be brought to God forgiven cleansed whole he's here for you today today that's all you have to from your heart turn to him and let's just pray together church out loud say dear God in heaven thank you for loving me I turn to you with all my heart I ask Jesus to become my savior and I make him the Lord of my life Holy Spirit fill me cleanse me Lord with your precious blood fill me with your power and your presence and Lord the rest of my life I want my life to bring great glory to your name so thank you Lord for your strength and your power from this day forward in Jesus name amen and amen father we want to thank you for those that prayed you're going to put a hunger for the Bible, to know your word, a hunger for the, the body of Christ, that, Father, their days will begin to move forward in glory and power. Lord, we want to thank you that you've taught us, Lord, that praise brings your presence. And I thank you for mothers and fathers and everyone in this building that this week will have accentuated praises, hands lifted, shouts to you, singing to you, praises of God in our children, over our homes, in our marriages, our families, that God arises in the midst of our homes and over every situation. We bless your church now in Jesus' name. And everybody said a big amen. Amen, church. Amen. Give God one more praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hey, church, as you're leaving out, just a few reminders. In the lobby, there's our Brave table and booth, so make sure you get your start getting your tickets today. If you're joining us for the prayer in Lansing, um, there is the booth. You'll see that out there as well. Don't miss that. There's all other things. Connect Center, if you're new, make sure we know who you are. Fill the Connect card. Take it to the Connect Center, and we have a gift for you. Church, we love you. If you join us online, thank you for being here. Be blessed. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.